Moving around in Vim can be a little bit fiddly, especially when you're first getting used to it. Now, obviously, the more that you use Vim, the easier it's going to get, but there's still some things about the interface that do make it a little bit annoying to use. So, for example, let's say we wanted to jump down to this line right here. Now, as you can see, I have relative line numbering enabled, so I could say jump to plus 14. So plus 14, or we could jump the other direction and go to something like minus 24. And obviously you can also jump directly to the line number if you actually know the line number. Now, the other way we can do that is let's say we wanna jump down to line 21. So we could jump to say, for example, V, or we wanna to jump to this line right here. So we could jump to, for example, line semicolon Q. Okay, that doesn't seem that much quicker, but what if we wanted to jump to this word on this line right here? Now, obviously you can search for the word and jump to alt equals quotation mark P. Now, that will work, but that's way too many key presses. So what if instead we did, we wanna to jump to MQ, or we wanna to jump to something like say, JP. Okay, what if we wanted to do that across multiple splits? So we could say jump to, I will open this one up right here. And let's say we wanna jump over to this word donate right here. So we could say jump to MD. Actually, I pressed MS there, but anyway, you got the point. I could jump across different splits and jump to a specific word. Now, the way that this is being done is with a plugin known as Vim Easy Motion. I didn't think I would like Easy Motion when I first tried it, but then I actually went and installed it. I used it for a couple of minutes and then I absolutely loved it. And I've been using it for a couple of days and honestly, this plugin is absolutely amazing. So today I obviously can't cover every single thing that Easy Motion can do because I think the manual is somewhere in the realm of 800 lines. So that will take way too much time. I'm just gonna be covering the default bindings and also some of the alternative bindings. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that everything in Easy Motion, at least with the default bindings, is prepended with leader leader. So if your leader key is, say, space, then you'd press space, space, and then some other key, or if it's backslash, 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 some other key. And the reason why it's done this is to make sure that it doesn't conflict with a bunch of other plugins. So for example, this plugin uses things like leader leader E, or leader leader W, or leader leader J, and there's a bunch of other plugins that also do things like leader E, or leader J, or leader W, and having them on the same keys would make it so they would very easily clash. Now, if you would prefer it to be on a single leader key, you can change it, or if you want it on some other key, you can change that as well, but I don't really mind it being on leader leader. This just makes it so it's not gonna clash with anything at all. Okay, so getting used to easy motion should be really, really simple because every single motion is basically just a modified version of the vanilla motion. So for example, let's say we wanted to jump to a single character to the right. We can do leader leader F, and then it's gonna prompt us for a character. So let's say we wanted to search for something like the letter E. Okay, now what that's done is attached a sequence of characters to every single instance of the letter E in our view. So let's say we wanted to jump down to this one in the word home right here. If I go and press J, what that's gonna do is then go and filter out everything that doesn't have J at the start of the sequence. And now as you can see, it's just showing the letter V for home. So we can go and jump directly to that one now. Obviously you don't have to wait for it to change over. If you know the sequence, you can just smash out the sequence straight away. But if you do forget the sequence because you have the memory of a goldfish, then it is gonna show you what it actually is. And we can jump in the other direction by doing leader leader F, uh, did the wrong one, leader leader capital F, and then that can jump to the left. So let's jump to, I don't know, O this time. And this time it's just gonna mark everything that has an O in it. And let's jump to this one in Apple touch icon. Press C, jump directly to that. We can also jump before a character to the right. So doing leader leader T, and let's just do E again. And this, as you can see, has actually gone and marked the character before every single instance of a letter E. So for example, we could jump to this one right here in donate. So J N, and that will jump us to the T directly before the E. And we can go in the other direction as well by doing leader, leader, capital T. Okay. And then we can jump to something like one. And there's not that many instances of one, so we can jump to this one right here. Now, when you're jumping to the left and you're jumping before something, before actually means after in the document. It's relative to the direction you're going, not relative to where the document actually starts from. 
So another thing we can do is search in a bi-directional way. We can do leader leader S and then we can search for a character again. And let's just do, I don't know, uh, A. So as you can see, it's highlighting stuff before this point and also after this point. So let's just jump down to JY. We can also jump directly to a word by doing leader leader W. So leader leader W and jump to say this word right here. Now what leader leader capital W does is basically changes what the definition of a word actually is. So by default in Vim, basically a word is considered to be everything after a space or some other sort of symbol. So in this instance of doing leader leader capital W, as you can see, because there's no space here, this source isn't actually considered to be a word at this point. The only things that are considered to be words are things that have a space between them. So if I go and add that space back in, and then I do leader leader capital W again, as you can see, source is a word, but each of these words inside of the string are not words because they don't have a space breaking them up. So leader leader lowercase w actually does consider them to be separate words. We can also go in the other direction by doing leader leader b, and then leader leader capital B treats words the same way that leader leader capital W does as well. We can jump to the end of a word by doing leader leader E. So leader leader W jump to the start of the word. Leader leader E will jump to the end of a word. We can jump to say this word right here. So by pressing L that will jump us there. And then leader leader capital E basically works in the same way that leader leader capital W does. Except it jumps to the end of a word instead of the start of a word. And we can do the same thing, but backwards by doing leader leader GE. So that's going to jump to the end of a word, but to the left. And then leader leader G capital E is going to jump to the end of a word, but going to the left. And once again, that's going to do it in the same way as capital W, capital B, and capital E. We can also jump to a line by doing leader leader J. And what that's going to do is jump downwards. So in this instance, let's jump to something like semicolon A. Or we could jump in the other direction by doing leader leader k. And that's going to obviously then jump upwards. So we can jump to say line m. Okay, and there's two more bindings left. We're almost at the end of the binding. So the next one we have is leader leader n. And what that's going to do is jump to something you searched with, with slash or with question mark. So let's go and search for something like rel, for example. And now if I do leader leader n, what that's going to do is search for every instance of rel going forward. So we could jump to this instance right here, or we could go in the other direction by doing a leader leader capital N. So then we can go and jump to say H or something like that. So before I can talk about the alternative bindings, I should probably briefly talk about how to actually do key binding in Vim. So if you're in regular Vim, you're going to go to your .vimrc, and if you're in nvim, you're going to go to your init.vim. Now I'm in nvim, so I'm going to go to my init.vim, and then what I'm going to show you is basically the bindings I was using during the intro. So the bindings I just showed you before were not the same ones I showed you in the intro. As you saw, when I tried to move a line, it wasn't going in both directions. So in the intro, I was actually using the overwind bindings. I'll explain those in just a moment, but I was actually using the overwind bindings there. So the way you actually do a binding in Vim is you start it by doing the mapping mode. Now, there's a couple of different mapping modes, but for the sake of this video, feel free to just use the regular version of map. And then after that, what you do is the sequence of keys that you want to press to actually activate the binding. So for example, you could say leader 7G. I wouldn't recommend that binding, but if you want to do that, then feel free to go ahead and do that. So I've gone and made it so all of my mappings will line up with the default binding. So leader, leader J or leader, leader dot or leader, leader F. Just so I can actually keep that in line with all of the regular bindings. And then after that, all of the easy motion commands are in the exact same form. So you start it by doing plug in angle brackets and plug starts with a capital P. And then in regular brackets, basically what you do is you write easy motion dash some other sort of binding. So easy motion dash F, easy motion dash W, easy motion dash repeat, easy motion dash overwind dash F. And all of these are described in the help page, which I'll get to in just a bit. But before we get to that, one thing you might have noticed is that when I did leader leader F and then search for say capital G, that actually searches across multiple lines. Now, if you know anything about the regular F binding in Vim, you would know that isn't actually how F is supposed to work. 
F actually only works on the line that you're currently on. So we'll try this as much as we want, and we're never going to be able to search for that capital G. So if you prefer to actually have that behavior, personally, I think that behavior is actually inferior to this. But if you want to make it act like it does in regular Vim, you actually can bring that back. So if you go over to the help menu for easy motion, we can actually go see what the alternative bindings that we actually have are. So let's go down to default. And as we'll see, that is the default key mapping table, but this is the default function table. So as you can see, plug easy motion dash F is mapped to leader F, or we have plug easy motion dash B is mapped to leader B. But these aren't the only bindings that we actually have available. For example, we have things that have BD in their name. So everything that has BD in their name, that basically means it's bidirectional. So if you do bidirectional W, what that's going to do is search for words before your cursor and also after your cursor. Or if you do BDJK, what that's going to do is let you do bidirectional line searching, which is slightly different to what I was doing with the overwind version. But if you're just using a single buffer, it will produce the same behavior. We also have things like the SOL bindings and the EOL bindings. So what SOL is going to do is if you jump to a line with an SOL binding, it will basically ignore your cursor position and then put the cursor at the start of a line. And then EOL is obviously going to do the same thing, but at the end of a line. Now, the ones that we were looking for before were going to be these bindings right here. So anything that has an L prepended after its name. So easy motion dash SL, easy motion dash FL, easy motion dash capital FL. What that's going to do is limit you to a single line. So we could actually go and map that by doing something like if we do easy motion dash FL, what that's going to do is make F act like F does in regular Vim. And then obviously, if you go and save this and then test it in a Vim buffer, what you're going to see is that F acts like it does in regular Vim. But we don't just have to be limited to a single character either. So we also have BD versions of the inline ones as well. But we'll skip over those for now. If we go down a bit further, if you see here, we have S2, F2, F2, S2. What these are going to do is let you search for two characters. Now, there's also inline versions of those as well. So you could have SL2, FL2, capital FL2. And that's going to be basically searching in a single line. And instead of searching for a single character, you're going to search for two characters. Now, it's not just limited to two characters either. You can also do SN, FN, capital FN. And there's inline versions of those as well. And what the N versions are going to be is basically... N number of letters. So you could have a search for 10 letters, for example, or you could have a search for 20 letters. Now at that point, it's getting a little bit ridiculous. But if you want to just do a three letter search, for example, three letters isn't really that ridiculous. And that is how you'd go about doing that. And then the last set of bindings we have are the overwind bindings. Now the overwind bindings are actually really cool. And I like kind of all of them. So we have overwind F. What that's going to do is do the F search, but across multiple splits. Or we have F2, which as we saw before, anything with two in its name means it's going to be searching for two characters. So that's F across multiple splits with two characters. The line function is going to let you jump to any line in any of your splits. And then the W version is going to let you jump to any word in any of your splits. Now, I really like these functions because it makes it really, really easy to jump around between my splits without having to, you know, manually move between the split and then jump directly to the thing I want to jump to. This time, I can just skip that in-between step and jump directly to the thing I want to without having to worry about actually switching to the split first. Now, there are other bindings in here that aren't related to the regular binding we saw before, but I haven't really used most of them. The one that I really do like though is easy motion dash repeat. So what easy motion dash repeat is going to do is basically repeat whatever the last easy motion action was. So if we do something like leader leader W and then jump to this word right here and then I do leader leader repeat. So I've got that bound to leader leader dot. What that's going to do is basically just repeat whatever the last easy motion action was. So if it's searching for a word, it'll repeat searching for a word. If it's searching for a line, it'll repeat searching for a line. Basically, it's just an easy way to repeat whatever your last action actually was. And there's absolutely nothing special about the installation process for this. So just come over to the GitHub page and then basically just take whatever you need for your specific plugin manager. Now, I'm not using any of these plugin managers. I'm using Vim plugs. So basically, it's the same thing that Vundle does, except I just get rid of the in part and it's plug 
and then easy motion slash vim dash easy motion. That's all I have to do. And if you're using any other plugin manager that's not listed here, then just convert it into whatever form that you need it to be in. So I think this plugin is actually really, really cool. This isn't just me saying, oh, this is just a cool plugin. No, I actually use this in Vim on a daily basis. It's going to be a part of my main Vim RC now. And I actually really like it. And I would really recommend it to anyone who has maybe not just trouble with the regular sort of Vim motions, someone who just wants to make the Vim motions better than they actually are. Because there are some things about it that are kind of just there because of historical purposes and aren't there because they are the most efficient way to do stuff. And if that's the case, you might as well switch it out for something that might be a little bit easier. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Corbinian, Craig, Nathan, Andrew, Montezar, Joseph, Peter D. Rowe, Tony, Donald, John, Mikel, Spagin, Tease, and Zilva. And if you want to go support my work, there'll be some links down below. And also my Amazon affiliate links. We can buy the gear I use in this channel or anything else you want. And I'll, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also, I'm going to check out my podcast. That is Tech of a T available on Library and YouTube and the audio version available wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also check out this channel available on Library, BitTube, and BitChute. And remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that is pretty much everything for me. And I'm out.